In this video, I'm going to show you one way to make a paw print mold out of dental alginate and how to make a cast from your mold. If you're like me and you skip through videos to get right to the instruction, please know that for the couple of extra minutes it takes you to watch the whole thing, you could save yourself a lot of time and supplies and trouble. Trust me on this one. If you'd like to make life better for you and your dog, the Border Collies and I would love you to join us. Yay! Good job! Let's get into the instructions right now. I bought a pound of dental alginate from eBay because alginate is not supposed to be harmful for pets. It's actually made from algae. It doesn't stick to things so should be easy to remove, although I'm going to talk a bit later about dealing with fur. And most of all, what appealed to me is that it captures really fine details. This product was pretty inexpensive compared to some other alginate molding compounds. So for an experiment, the price was right. I'll give you the link to the product I bought in the description below if you want to try it. So first, what not to do. Because the amounts on the package were intended for dental use, they were pretty small quantities, not really enough for a paw print impression. I bought the product from Canada and the package said 20 milliliters of water for nine grams of alginate or 40 milliliters of water plus 18 grams of alginate. So when I made my first batch, mistake number one, I increased the volume of the material and water based on volume instead of weight. This will not work. I used 1.5 fluid ounces of alginate with six fluid ounces of water. The result was a lumpy mixture that actually never set. <laughs> Then I found out that you need to measure weight and not volume with alginate to get a proper mixing consistency. So next I tried 54 milliliters of powder to 120 milliliters of water. I added the powder to water already in the bowl and used a silicone spatula in a plastic mixing bowl which worked way better than a spoon. The way you mix makes a big difference to the texture. You start by blending the powder gently into water but very quickly you need to mix vigorously against the side of your bowl to get a smooth substance. Mistake number two, timing. I did the next paw impression about two minutes, 45 seconds from when I added the powder and one minute after the color changed. It was too late and the mixture had hardened. The color started changing about one minute and a half from when I added the powder and that's when I needed to get my paw imprint done. The instructions say that the total working time is 1 minute and 45 seconds, so when the color changes, you have about 15 seconds left. I also used a smaller container, probably a bit too small. I don't give up easily though. <laughs> so this time I set the timer for 1 minute and 45 seconds, but actually even that is a bit too long. Mistake number three, pushing the paw down too far into the container. There were two problems here. One is that there wasn't a lot of mixture and the container was small. So the substance was too thin right at the bottom and came off on my dog's paw. Oh God. The other thing is that though alginate is known for not sticking to things, removal from hair or fur can be tricky because the alginate will trickle down between each hair. So pulling fine hair from a mold can be a bit difficult. I've read though that using a water-based hair cream can work to fill the tiny gaps between the fur. One brand that was recommended is called Cholesterol, which I have not tried, but I might be tempted just to test whatever conditioner you have on hand. After, I set the timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds, but 1 minute 20 seconds would probably be better. You need to set the timer right when you add the mixture. Attempt number four was actually successful, except that I didn't properly clean the tiny lump of alginate in Asha's paw, and the lump became part of the impression. Oh well, a little happy memory of our paw molding time together. Attempt number five, I used Vaseline on the fur between Asha's paw pads. That attempt was actually successful if you don't count the little bits of dirt that was actually on her paw, which I think just adds character. Also, although the alginate doesn't stick, it does create suction, so you have to pull it out gently in order to preserve the mold. To make the cast, I decided to use up a small amount I had left of Amazing Mold Putty. I thought I might use this as a stamp, 
but I actually have a better method of making a paw print stamp, which I'll link to at the end of this video. Then I use Plaster of Paris for casting. Use one part water to two parts powder. You should apparently add the powder to the water, but I did it the other way around and it worked fine. Shake or blow out any air bubbles after pouring. When I first removed the plaster from the alginate mold, the plaster looked pink, but that faded completely as it dried. You can see the lumps of the alginate in this paw print casting. The molds should be used for your casting before they dry out and shrink. If you don't use them right away, then put them in a sealed container in the refrigerator and that will give you a bit more time, probably a day or two. The mold will work for maybe one casting, possibly two, and that's about it. They'll fall apart after use. I tried making another mold using a longer container. The only problem with using the longer container was that Asha had to stand. She has a weakness in her back and she couldn't stay in the stand position. Having an assistant would have helped for this. So this didn't work because her paw moved while the mold was setting. I used only 108 milliliters of powder to 240 milliliters of water here. If I tried this again, I would probably want to use about double that amount. Also, it's really important to mention that I did a lot of training with containers before we did the actual molds. I practiced holding Asha's foot in the container in a number of ways before actually doing the molds. Asha's pretty relaxed about it and I definitely wouldn't do this with a dog that was going to be highly stressed by this. For the last of the mixture I used a mid-sized container. So Asha could stay on the ground but her foot wouldn't touch the bottom. This worked pretty well. The biggest challenge with this particular mixture is that it is very thick so you really can't pour it. So for example, at the top of Asha's paw, I didn't completely cover it. If you want detail of the top of your dog's paw, make sure you cover the paw as soon as you put your dog's paw in the mixture. But I still really like the detail of the final casting. You can sand the plaster of Paris once it's dry. You can also glue your piece to some special wood or stone for a special memory of your pet. You can also paint it. I haven't used other brands of alginate, so I don't know if some could be thinner in substance or easier to pour. If you've tried other types, I'd love to hear your experience about it in the comments below. I would definitely choose this specific alginate for a small size project where I really wanted fine detail. I'd love to try making a mold of my hand with one of my dog's paws, but to do this I would probably need a helper. This bag is one pound of alginate, so depending on your container size, you could probably use the whole bag for something like that. A plastic container is ideal and you could probably find something at a dollar store, maybe a food storage container. If I find something suitable, I'll link it below. It would be nice to be able to stir the alginate in the container you're using for the mold, but I found it a bit difficult to get a smooth blend without using a bowl. If you do stir the alginate in the container you're using, definitely use a soft spatula. The silicone spatula worked really well for this. I did try thinning the mixture a bit and it does end up a little bit lumpy. So I would probably stick to the weight proportions recommended. If you've had experience using alginate for this type of mold making, I'd love to hear how it worked for you. There is also a really easy, no fuss way to make a paw print mold. And you can see that method in this video right here. See you next time.